we went from fitting a very tall golfer to fitting a shorter golfer. We're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about, I've got an apex here for you guys to see. We'll talk about a little bit about Wilson Golf Club since the rep stopped by. All next on What's in My George Golf Talk. <laughs> Welcome back to the McGolf Shop. Jim McClear here, and this is What's in My Drawers Golf Talk because it's What's in My Drawers over in the shop over there. And it's why What's in My Drawers because old club makers, club fitters are tremendous pack rats, and I'm no different. So, what do we talk about? We talk about uh, golf club reviews, golf club repairs, golf club fittings, and a lot of stuff in between. All sheer scores can go low. If you would, like, subscribe, hit that stuff across the bottom, and let all your friends and people know <laughs> so we can get a lot of this uh, information out to the YouTube universe. And as we keep going with this is that there will be a video. I did a video, and it was a review of the new Mizuno T24. And also in that is a quick, it's not a very in-depth one, but a very quick comparison between the RB Tour from Mizuno and the R and the RB Tour uh, Max, so RB Tour Max. I know you're not going to be able to see it, but there it is, RB Tour Max. And mm -hmm. we'll talk about that a little bit as well, if you'd like. All right, so let's get started. So number one, uh, look, Europe basically cleaned the clocks of the of the U.S. folks. There's a lot of you know, of course, it doesn't. You doesn't get a lot of press unless there's a lot of drama. I am not going to go there. Uh, needless to say, that if you guys got to watch it in the first round, the the Europeans were pulling off shots that were just they were spectacular. I mean, they really were. They were some crazy nice shots, and it would just it decimated the USA guys. Now. I would imagine after USA got done with the shock of it and you go watch back that they pulled off some pretty fantastic shots too. Unfortunately, it was too little too late. I can talk about guys being sick, live golf. You can do all that stuff. Still doesn't matter. They got smoked and congrats to the Europeans on that particular one. Maybe next time we will plan a little bit better. All righty, going forward, uh, let's see. A build, my, you know, we talked about the six foot ten build guy. There it is, some Strixon ZX4s with a Cleveland wedge. And we use the uh, Modus 105s in this stiff. And I'll tell you what I did here with them in a minute. Another picture of the same thing. And we put in the uh, Jumbo Max Ultra Light Larges larges and uh in order to make them go now we also made and i didn't make a picture of it i made a uh, a try an odyssey try hot model 7 and we made it 37 inches long <laughs> and we used the jumbo max grip like the kind that uh you would see bryson using and i actually turned the flat towards the target so it was kind of neat you know it's, it's sitting out there and uh so it was very very cool uh, the build came out really neat. I soft stepped, uh, I soft stepped the, the shafts once just to see what would, uh, because he, the, the golfer really wasn't swinging like stiff, right? And the 105 plays a little stiffer than advertised. So to get all this together, I want them in the bottom of the stiff range. As it turns out, the, the top end of the head, the top end of the set was exactly at the stiff range. And the bottom end of the set was right in the middle of the stiff range. So it worked out very, very well. So I hope he likes it. Hope he enjoys golf for a long, long time. Which takes us into fitting a shorter golfer. All right. We went from 6'10 to something in, a, in the five foot and some change range. Okay. Scott, who will be on here, is one heck of a, uh, one heck of a guy. And his wife is is very 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 nice as well. Uh, we've been we've been very blessed to meet two solid, very very solid couples. That they all you know the women understand that the guys like golf. <laughs> That's what it comes down to. 
It turns out that uh, this one, his wife is from New Zealand. So I got to learn a lot about New Zealand. That was really very cool as well. Very informative going both ways. And uh, so to kind of give you an idea, this is uh, Scott and his wife right there. Very nice folks. And it just and what it was, his son uh, got pinned as a Navy chief up in Great Lakes, which is where I did my boot camp and some of my training at. And he is an EM, an electrician's mate, and he made chief in a very, very short amount of time. Uh, making E7 is no joke. And uh, congratulations to him. I'm glad to, see, glad to see young people becoming successful. So that was very, 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 very cool. All right, so special challenges for fitting shorter golfers is pretty much the same thing as fitting taller golfers. It really is the availability of the equipment to swing so it doesn't feel foreign, right? So I, I have a set of clubs when I do things in the irons. I don't do it in the drivers, but I do it in the irons. I'll make one set of standard and one set an inch taller because for me, more likely, I'm going to fit people that are going to be taller, not shorter. So you, it, it's, a real, it's a real trick. Now, you know, you can choke down an inch and still get away with stuff, but that's about the max, right? You don't want, otherwise the, the grips, you're at the end of the grip. It feels kind of small. You know, it's not in just, just the same thing with uh, very large people. You get the taller ones and you use mid-sized grips and that might not be big enough. So you got to look at that. So what are the problems and the challenges in doing a short golfer? Well, number one is obviously uh, standard length is not going to work. Now, normally what happens is in order to deal with the, the, shorter, the shorter height is that the swing gets flatter, okay? And when the swing gets flatter, that means the lie angle needs to get flatter still, so they're kind of outside the norm. Now, uh, and that's to make room for the regular club and they're making their swing arc fit the golf club. So instead of making a swing arc that might go like this and come through, you might be out here swinging around like that. We see that quite a bit with, you know, people in Asia, that kind of stuff. Uh, they have to have a, sw a, a flatter swing arc in order to make the club work. But in order to work best, the line angle needs to be flat. Otherwise, you're going to be coming into the ground very much like that, okay, instead of like that. So that's uh, that's one thing to consider. And then the real length. And then and the, the best part about some of this is as the swing arc gets flatter, your club can actually get longer, all right, because it is flatter. That's the reason why in the day you'd hear the guys, oh, you need this flat swing plane. And it would be it would be nothing for guys to subscribe or prescribe uh, clubs that were a half inch long and a couple of degrees flat. Now, all oh, that must be a better player because he's got that flatter swing plane. All right, and then what that may, that that dominoes into inside out swings, paths, and hitting draws or hitting blocks, one way or to another. Okay. So once we get that part figured out, and as it turned out, we needed to be, I had him at basically a half of an inch shorter, but we're going to, it was a combination. He hit the half inch short very, very well. He hit the inch shorter better. I, I think that's more from a comfort factor than anything else, but we're going to use it. And then uh, we started bending clubs so that, because now at this particular point, when you're talking a standard like club, and we're talking 40, he was like talking four flat. I ended up about three degrees flat. Well, when you start bending clubs like a coat hanger, you get stuff like this. And that's the ferrule or the hosel on one of the irons I was bending. And I snapped that thing clean off. And it was because I had to drill it out somewhat in order to accept my adapter. So I need to buy a couple new heads. <laughs> and, uh, but that's, that's just part and parcel of the fitting. And, and so once we got him into the the right lie angle, now we knew what the speed was. We watched, and, and Scotty had an abbreviated swing, but uh, right lower here, it was all extension, 
all throw it out and it was all acceleration. So we were going to beef up the flex to match how he was loading it, meaning that uh, it was very, very strong in the hands and he was like a lot of that. And so we needed to get something that was a little more but stiff. And so we started handing him clubs. And I started with the VRTX graphite iron shaft. And it worked out pretty good. I'll say it worked out pretty good. Then I went, and that was an 85. Now, he was swinging a 105, but it was short. So now I got him in this 85. Hit it very, very well. Put him in a constant weight, 95. Eh, not so good. And then I put him in the Acura TZ in the 85. And, poof, and that thing took right off. And then why did I do that? Because the VRTX is a different profile. It is very, it's stiffer in the butt, to be sure. But and to compare it against the, the constant weight shaft, which is more of a, and that's what I say, is a constant profile and a constant bend versus something in the butt. And then the TZ is what I like to call the player's profile, somebody with a late release, a little bit, you know, we, we took a little bit out of the tip section, basically. And all of a sudden, the, the bigger bends got smaller, and he actually hit it further. So that was a, that was a good thing. And we uh, we ended up with the Wilson with Wilson D nines. All right, he's a Wilson fan, so we stayed there, and uh, we went with the Wilson D nines, and he hit him very very well. Now his miss was a little bit behind the ball, so the wider sole will uh, bounce him out, and it'll be fine. Uh, now taking us into the Wilson review, uh, Dave, my rep, showed up and left me with one of these, which is the catalog for the upcoming. And he showed me the new stuff. And so this year, the you know, we had Dynapower last year, or introduced this year, sorry. Um, we had the Dynapower drivers, Fairy Woods, Hybrids, and the Dynapower Irons, which were the big, forgiving, massive offset, very strong, hit the ball far irons. And it took off. The, the Woods got a lot of press, and I think they're a really great wood. We almost put one in Scott's bag, but uh, another club beat it out. And the uh, the fairway woods and the hybrid would not have worked in this case because they tend to run a little more upright, and that wouldn't have worked for Scotty. So we went with something else. Anyway, when we got into the iron, oh, now it, what they're getting ready to release is the player section. So it's going to be a blade, a CB, and the new version of that. Okay. The new D9 is now going to be called Dynapower Forge. I can tell you that. I'm under embargo not to show you any pictures or get in too much detail, but I'm going to tell you right now, I'm going to call it the Dyna Forge instead of Dynapower Forge because it just sounds cooler. And the the backing of this, now that I've really concentrated on this one, uh, it's a it's a new upgraded design back in here. And uh, these changed a little bit as well. But it's still the forge concept, uh, a little bit smarter in the in the removal of the weights or the placement of the weights. It is very smart looking, very very smart looking. Uh, the CB is probably again going to be one of my more favorite clubs. Uh, it's not going to have enough. It's going to be stronger. It's going to be weaker lofted, so the distances won't be there for the stronger golfer. However, that's the reason why I have a bending machine, and we're going to jack some lofts. And, and make it in there. And of course, the blade looks cool. All the blades look cool, but uh, about a tenth of us can actually play them. So we got that out of the way. The wedges are getting retooled just ever so slightly. Uh, to There's three kinds of wedges now. There's one that's going to have a lot of relief, one that's going to have a standard relief, and one with a wider sole. And uh, they're a forged iron or a forged club. And they're going to be kind of aggressive in the face. I foresee that uh, somebody looking for a good uh, wedge, price-conscious wedge, even a regular wedge for that matter, uh, that could be one. And I keep looking over there because I got my other ones over there. Uh, so I like that one. And then they are uh, they showed up with some milled putters. Um, Wilson jumped out of the, you know, they had their black, putters that were the inexpensive price points 
And what they did is they jumped into the milled market and they have, memory serves at least four, they have a milled 8802. So for you old school guys looking for a bit of feel that like that look, this thing, I actually got to putt with it right-handed and the thing actually putts pretty good. Uh, that one was really neat. The They have their version of the Fang putter uh, and it scoops the golf ball and it felt very, very well. And the cleanest looking one of them all was the Anzer style. That one, very, very clean. So if you like that particular look, it can do that. Now, me being a component guy, I can get heads of these and upgrade the putter into a BGT or a, a you know a low torque shaft and uh, and change the feel to the better even more. So that's pretty neat. There's a lot coming. There, this is going to be the year of the uh, of the player irons. You know all the all the distance irons, all the all the very forgiving irons, and the and a lot of the drivers came out at the beginning of this year. So what we're seeing is the beginning of the next year is all the player stuff. You know, the the upper end for Mizuno Pro, the upper end for Wilson. We're seeing Apex coming out. So it, it's going to be a good year for those folks. All righty. So we went from them and seeing them, and thank you for coming. He drove out from California, right? And actually, he didn't come to see us, obviously. He came to see his son get pinned, and obviously so. And then drove down here and then was on his way uh, on his way back. So good for him. All righty. As a couple other things that are off topic, I, uh, I went to the local, I was going to the local liquor store and I found those. So I'm real happy that I found those. And, uh, that was pretty cool. And last night I was talking with my dad, Robin and I were talking with my dad on the back porch and we took a couple of really nice, just, we got all kinds of room kind of pictures. I just thought it was really kind of neat to be able to see that off the back porch. It's one of those, you know, one of those things you always like, you know, when I grow up, this is what I want to see. Well, there it is. So for me, all righty. So we talked all about that. We got there. We talked about Wilson. Uh, oh, the, the Mizuno, you're going to see the Mizuno comparison. Uh, I like this wedge. So you, you, you need to see it. it. It really, there's a tale of two golf balls in it and we go through the construction of it in detail. And I was using, I actually tried the new, uh, uh, Project X wedge shaft works pretty good. Works pretty good. All right, on to the Apex. This is the only thing I got left-handed so far, and it's the Apex U wood. All right, the Apex U wood, and I got a right-handed version of this thing, and I let him hit it, and he hit the crowd out of it. Uh, very it did very very well. He just hit the, and, and in fact that's what we're going to put in his in his in his bag. So what's the difference? You have the apex blade, you're going to have a cavity back, and then you're going to have the pro model, which is be kind of a semi hollow body. And then you're going to go into these, and then there's a UT. And, and what that's going to be is kind of a, a best I can figure is a driving iron. I haven't even seen a picture. And then you're going to have these, and these are U woods. Now what these are for is a, uh, instead of a hybrid, although they're going to have, I think we're seeing a super hybrid come out of here somewhere. Anyway, the U-Woods, these guys, are a little bit bigger version in the head. Right, a little bit bigger version here. As you can tell, that's more fairway-ish. But the club itself is a little shorter, and it's a lot flatter. Okay? And, and it's, of course, it's got most of the technology in it, very hard face, that kind of stuff. And a little flatter. So for those guys that struggled with hybrids because they're very upright, this is kind of a club that gives you that shorter punch in, in order to get out there. And we saw it work. So not too bad. So there's that one. Okay. We got through it all, I think. We see, saw all the pictures, saw all that stuff. We're good to go. Let's go see what the questions are. All righty, up to the top. There's Matt. Hello, everyone. Been busy with soccer the last two Mondays. Missed all of you. Question, can you modify any old ping putter to sound like the original? No. Uh, help all as well. <laughs> well, okay. So 
we all, uh, hopefully we all know the story where the ping got their name from was when mr uh solheim karsten solheim uh designed this putter and it's basically two rails connected at the end with a mount somewhere north of the southern end of the putter right so if it was if we just use this as a so if it had a a rail on this side and then a rail on this side and it was connected here and here the 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 putter would be connected somewhere in there and when you put it when you hit the ball with this putter ping it just rattled and it made the most obnoxiously loud ping and but people hit it and very much liked it and that was the original ping putter and thanks to mr uh so karsten's wife that came up with the idea of calling it ping because that's the sound that it made all righty so that's where that came from now there are the next one that really got him put on the map was the anzer putter and it called the anzer because he said it was the answer to all the putting but the little toe area wasn't big enough to put answer the word answer in there and the wife said well just put answer in there and in there and there's the other part of that well, and we all know that what the Anzer looks like, and there is some of the, one of the originals of those had slots in them, and they made a bit of a different noise, but not that outrageous ping sound, and, and then the other ones were much, much more muted, and I think that was by demand, honestly, and then the rest of them are history, right? Everybody's trying to keep that muted, uh, solid sound in order to make that go, so if you really, really wanted that ping sound, you probably want to go to buy one of those original ping putters and it will cost you a, a little bit of change in the back pocket. Manual. Hello, Jim Ron, the rest of the disciples rainy round last week, soggy 84. Well, good for you. Lots of reshaft work this week. Anyone having difficulty matching older shafts to newer ones? Oh man, there, that is the bread and butter for a lot of folks out there. Manual. So we had a, uh, so we had a, uh, a breast cancer tournament that we played in Bob and I, and, and a couple of Nick and, and, uh, Mike and the Penny and Robin, um, they, they manned a putting game and they brought in quite a bit of money and it was for breast cancer awareness. So it was a good thing. And we, we came in, our team came in third. We shot a 12 under, I think, 60. And uh, it was a 59 before us and a 58 with the other team that we were playing on. So not too bad. Uh, but older shafts to newer ones, if they're the same, I don't see that being a problem. It's trying to find those ones that have been discontinued to get something like them. That's a bit of a difference. Okay. But he also says, customers feel that newer shafts will break up the feel and performance of the set, which it basically will. I am finding Uniflex Callaway shafts. <laughs> well, it depends on the, you know what they're saying, that the the True Temper TTXLs are, are as about as close as you're going to get to the Uniflex. And will they be different? Yeah, it's because they're a different shaft. That's just part and parcel of the gig. Will they see it in a performance issue? Meaning, well, will it make them hit it super high or spin it more or launch it lower and hit it really far in that? Uh, if you're if you're really close to the flex profile and the and the weight, uh, probably not, right? It just have this different look than all the rest. David DeFeo, good evening, sir. Sunny V, seasonally warm up in the Canada area. 80s, woo, wow. Typically, courses shut down in the October. Weather has hit, is hit and miss. Well, as long as you can still get going, man, it's all good. BRB, be right back. Okay. There's Peter. How are you, sir? If you hit, I saw the pictures from that. So Peter went on a, uh, a golf trip for... Uh, the Navy veterans over in San Diego, some of the pictures that he showed me were, they, they played a pretty nice course. 
So well done, sir. Jim Anderson, thank you for staying up very late. Weather's been changeable, so no golf last week. Cooler days and dark nights coming. Great show last week. Enjoyed your videos. Well, thank you. Yeah, we got through it. We did all the, the we called them, I tried calling them golf club basics and taking you through some of uh, what I would consider some of the important ones, particularly in a build. So that wasn't too bad. There's Charlie. How are you, sir? Oh, forgot to ask him. Forgot to ask him what. Uh, we'll be in Cincy this weekend for a soccer tournament. <laughs> You're a traveling man, sir. You are a traveling man, but it's good. They got talented kids. Travis K 2025 Ryder cup at Beth page black is going to be amazing. Looking forward to that. That will be pretty good. The crowds are going to be very rowdy. It'll be something to see. Hi, Rob. Duke K. Robin Jen. So out of 77. Nicely done. Been gone for a while. Was dealing with a melanoma head surgery. Almost healed up from a six inch cut. Yuck. I got, I, I'm with you, brother. I got one right there. You see all that? Like that. I got one right here. And that. And then I got another one like right there. So I understand completely. I'm glad you're coming back from it. All righty. Golf dog. Here's a new one. Greetings, Jimmy Robin. Stan from Central Florida. Well, very good, Stan. Thanks for showing up. It's great. New K, thanks for Robin. Going well. Hammer. Let's not talk about the Ryder Cup. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? You know, it's hard being on the on the getting side of the given of the given part of that tournament. Uh yeah, I don't know what to say. I think I was going to look up what the the only thing I wanted to, you know, we talked about this last week about the the records of the people that were playing. And they were trying to make arguments about being team players and stuff like that. Okay. I mean, that's a heck of an argument. Uh, but I want to go back and see what the end of it, now that they've played it all again, what the individual records are and see if it marries up to the reasoning why they did what they did. And, uh, and then maybe we can look at that going forward. John Timmons. Good afternoon, Jim and Robin. Love the program. Thank you, sir. Thank you for coming in. There's John Cherry. John Lamb. Kind of cool here in Calgary. Having a hard time telling myself that, yes, I really do need one more club. I need bigger pant pockets to attempt to keep my AVXs warm. No more yellow golf balls either. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Very good. Uh, now you can make those pockets. You can carry them around and maybe get one of those ham warmers and just keep them in there. And he's like, well, you're more than welcome, man. Just let us know when you're coming. Terry Lockwood. Hello, guys. John Lamb says, colored golf balls like to hide in the leaves, particularly the orange ones, right? So it used to be that, in fact, I was just telling the, the Wilson rep, in their Wilson duos, they have all the colors under the sun, well, at least when they started. And, you know, they had the traditional green and the red and the orange and the yellow. And, uh, and they came out with this optic blue. And it was really... It was really ugly and nobody was buying the blue and he comes down there and he's talking. He says, Oh, I got something for you. And he hands me a, a box of these blue optic Wilson's. And I'm like, Dave, nobody, nobody likes these blue golf balls. And he says, why do you think I'm giving them to you? <laughs> and I was like, okay, well, I'll lose them as easy as anybody else. And I went out the next day and played uh, crown Hill and did not lose one golf ball. Played flat out. It was just out, down, out, down, out, down. And it was just really nice round of golf. Didn't lose one. I said, I'll be doggone. That's karma for you right there. Yep, we figured her out, buddy. There's Robin talking to everybody. 
John, bam, we're getting through these things. I'm not getting asked any questions. Ah, John, is there a particular swing speed that would dictate putting someone into a senior flex shaft and wooden iron? Well, yes. Um, once you start getting below 80, you, all right, let's put it this way. From a purely numbers perspective, if the first number in your driver's swing speed starts with a seven, chances are you want to start considering a flex or senior flex shafts. All right, now, the what changes that is how you swing that 70-ish uh, swing speed. Now, you can be as violent as Nick Price, and we may have to bump you up into the regular flex just so that the shaft stays with you, right? But you could also be in that, say, low 80s category and be as smooth as Ernie Els, Tai Chi on golf, and you might need to go down into the lower flex just because you're not loading the shaft, right? And, and order and the whole the whole premise here is to get the club to get to here, right? Square, not here, not here, not here, not there. Square, and and so you have to take those things into into reason. Now the other part is is weight, right? The other as you get more flexible, these clubs will become lighter. Now, again, if you're a smoother swinger, you will love lighter. If you're this aggressive swinger, again, that we're talking about, you will like heavier so that you can find it in your backswing. Now, there's several, several, several ways of getting to that point, but maybe you might find an A-flex in a 60-gram shaft. That would be a tough, that's a tough call. It doesn't, it doesn't mean it doesn't exist, but they're not going to be as many as, say, in a 50-gram shaft or even a 40 gram shaft. Now you get in the fifties. Now, typically when you're talking about somebody that's a senior flex, you know, they're older and a lighter shaft will feel better, even if it is aggressive too. So, you know, I'm throwing a lot out there, John, but that's kind of the process and how it goes. All righty. Here's a new one. Orly Sinkler. John Cherry following. <laughs> Here we go. Okay. Golf dog saying best, best of health to Duke K with the melanoma. That's an awesome, awesome thought, sir. And Robin's talking to John and Rick because they are on Facebook. I wonder where it's, did I see any Facebooks? Nope, they just must have seen them. Uh, Duke K, thanks, golf dog, healing up. All the cancer is gone. Everyone cover up. I would agree, sir. Even now, I just I don't even go outside the house without a hat on anymore. I used to go out all the time. Not anymore. Not anymore. And then you go and then you got to go get checked, right? They go look at you and they and they check you. And uh, so that's real fun to do every, every time. Well, as well. All righty. Recover well, Duque. My big brother played through last season to stay positive, and he had to start using a bucket-style hat, wide brim, shades more off of his face. Yeah, so it was funny. I had, you know, you can see a bit right here a bit of a divot, and that, I thought, I had that on my nose, I bet, for the better part of 10 years. thought it was a wart. Kept pulling it off, and it'd grow back. I put the wart medicine on it, it grow back. Finally, I just went to the dermatologist and said, what is it? And they said, oh, that's cancer. Didn't even blink, didn't even, you know, no concern, nothing. So we know what kind it is, you're fine. And they went in there with the Mohs system and got rid of it, and life's good after that. Hate to have to lose body parts just to the <laughs> just to cancer, but that's the way it's going to be, I think. David DeFeo, hope all is well. Yeah, thank you, sir. Same to you. Robinson, all is good. John Lamb, how did you enjoy the Buffalo Trace? Was introduced to Boom 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 Boo Rum last tournament. Might be a convert. <laughs> you know, I haven't I haven't opened up the Buffalo Trace as yet, but I did open the Weller. 
and the Weller was in the Weller Rye. I've, everybody's like, oh, Rye, ooh. And then I've met a couple guys who are Rye is actually really good. You need to check that out. And I got the Weller Rye, and I let the ice sit in it for just a little while. Good to go. I'm with, I'm with the Weller and the Green, man. That, that does some good stuff. Buffalo Trace is next. Buffalo Trace Factory is only about three, three and a half hours from here. I was just mentioning to Mrs. McGough that we we need to uh, make a make a weekend of that, and and because it's the it's the Bourbon Trail, go see Woodford Reserve that kind of thing, and uh, she found down that area they got these ginormous bourbon barrels, and I, when they they're they're little tiny homes that are the size of bur- that are designed like bourbon barrels that you can stay in overnight. So we might be just doing that. <laughs> Justin Waring, there he is. He was at the cancer tournament with us. It was nice seeing you at the outing this weekend. I hope it raised a lot of money. I believe that it did. I'm guessing. I it Justin, it would be just a guess on my part, but I'm going to say somewhere around. It's got to be somewhere north of ten grand. So that that's pretty good for a. We had every tee box with two teams on it, two teams of four. And it was a five and a half hour to six hour round. And the hot dogs at the turn were awesome. And uh, they had donuts from the local donut place, which are always good. And uh, they had some tacos at the end. We didn't stay for the tacos. Uh, We went to a local pizza place. One I've been here 30 years I've never been to. And I'm sorry I missed it. It was really quite good. So not bad because I don't get that neck of the neck of woods in that part of town very often. But now we might have to. All righty. Charlie, backyard looks like someone get a lot of balls in. You're correct, sir. <laughs> you are correct. That, uh, let's see. What you're looking at right into there, that land that you see right there. That is the that is the range, or what was the range? That is what that was the range, and uh, that was the cool part about it. Uh, we just had the the uh, the poles and the netting cleaned up this oh this weekend, and uh, they rolled up all the netting and had been laying in the ground for so long it collected a bunch of grass and dirt and stuff. And they rolled it up and we put it in. It, it fit just so nice into this trailer, you know, a dump trailer that you rent and they take it out. And the limit on this trailer is somewhere around, uh, what is it? It's somewhere around 2,000 pounds, 2,200 pounds. And it was all said and done because all said and done, we had well over 3,000. And I was like, ooh, so that costs us a little extra money, but. Well worth it. Mrs. McGough jumped on the lawnmower and cut the extra weeds down. Now it looks like we have a real backyard. So we're, we're getting closer. Golf dog. I knew I needed senior flex when I had to take an extra club or two. I faced reality, bought a set of ping 710 red dots, playing the ball a little closer now, making a far better connection. Well, nice for you, bud. Stance and being away from it is is very very important. All righty, Hammer. Why does Mizuno not have more representation on the tours? I've heard they don't pay tour pros to use their equipment. Any inside knowledge? Oh, I would say yeah, they probably do, but they're very very conservative. You got to keep in mind, Mizuno is a Japanese company, and by design, they're not extraordinarily flashy. They're, they're conservative, and the way that Mizuno promotes themselves is a conservative, very professional group. Think of a baseball glove, right? And again, going back to Wilson, the uh, you, when I was growing up, you had a Wilson T8000. Damn, you were, you were there. You were the man, right? And But the only one that came up with it against it was the Mizuno club, or the Mizuno glove, because it was something else. Well, now it's the, I think they call it the A2000 Wilson and Mizuno's got a, a competitor and they, you know, they say it's nicer leather, costs a little bit more, more hands-on, that kind of thing. And it, and you see how that keeps rolling. That that rolls itself into the golf as well. And, but uh, 
like the likes of Luke Donald, uh, a couple of the other folks, you know, but they don't have a very large stable. They, they like getting it out there and, and having those guys do that. Now I would like to see them put as much effort into getting guys into their irons as they, as they should doing for their woods to get people playing their woods. Uh, but it, it's really hard to break through in drivers on the tour. Once you get past Titleist, Callaway, and Ping, it's a fight. And you and they have to do something to get them in there. I don't know if they're willing to go that yardage. And if you look, uh, Mizuno had a, a banner year, like two or three years in a row here, just even up to this last year. And when you're when you're selling and you're and you're rocking and rolling, you know the idea is well, why do I have to change anything until I see a change in something else? But that's basically what it is. They have a they have their own tour van, so they're not they're not cheaping out on that by any shape of the imagination. In fact, they got one there on the pro tour. I saw one at the ladies tour, and that could have been the uh, either the senior tour or the. Uh, what are we calling it now? Not the dot com, but the uh, Corn Ferry Tour could have stopped over there and provided some assistance. So they are starting to get into it. David DeFeo, my Mez Max arrived today. They sent the wrong head cover. <laughs> well, you don't need the head cover to putt well. I hope you like it. Now, keep in mind, I will give you. A, I will give you a pro tip. The that putter will work way better when you don't grip it tight. So however you're, however you were gripping your putter uh, normally, uh, you could just, just dial it back, dial it back just a little bit and let the putter swing and, and watch it just work. Like they say, it goes where you aim it. So there you go. Has Wilson redesigned their wedges for the new release? Yeah, to an extent. It's not going to be something that's like earth-shattering, Charlie, or, oh, my God, you know, it's something brand new. But what they've done is uh, they've got what they call, like they call the tour grind. And it's a lot of heel-toe removal. And then the trailing edge was knocked down pretty significantly. And that's for guys that want to open the club face quite a bit. And you'll have and it'll have a series of lofts with um, lower bounce angles, and then the other one, the tour one, which I go through the most, which is a a I'll say narrower than most uh, sole angle, but higher bounce, and it will still be rounded but cleaner. the The back end they they took out a little bit of. They, they changed the shape just ever so slightly, took out some weight, moved it up so you get a little bit more control. The face on the front is, uh, is as aggressive as the other one, if not a little bit more so. And then they also have uh, a high toe. And that, I, that was the one thing that I thought was not very good in this particular model. The high toe was very boxy, very just like afterthought. Now it's molded into the rest of the look for all the other ones. So if you put it in there, you look down, you're like, oh, that's really neat looking. And then you're going to notice and go, well, that toe's a little higher. Yeah, okay. And then you'll see the lines all the way across. So not too bad. Just a tweak, really. All right, Golf Dog DeFeo, you get an extra mulligan on each nine with that horrible head cover. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> oh. It was nice seeing you too, Justin. And I hope you guys you, were you on the fifty-eight or, or were you on the fifty-nine crew or where did you end up at? Bill Nauman, he got a Mez Max today. Also, well, I hopefully I'm the cause of you guys getting it, and you guys put outstanding when you guys take them out here shortly. Very good. I'm Justin. It was great to see Friendly Face. Got a picture of you and your group. <laughs> you got to watch those ladies with the with the cameras on the phones, man. Bill Nauman says hi to Robin. Robin says hi back. 
Joshua Fish. All right, here we go. I'm installing some new BBNF ferrules in the Mizuno 923. I saw your email. Thank you. All right. Uh, do you have? Do the shafts have tip weights? Yes, they do. Um, so yes. Yeah, so let me try this. <clears throat> so yes, the an the answer to your question is yes. Do they have tip weights in it? The answer is yes. Why do they do that? Because the the Mizuno is real big with swing weight. Okay. And, and what they will do is they will, they've got their calculations of length, this, the, the weights and you know, how the, the head weights and that kind of thing. So I can get this thing off of here. Wow. She's on there. Good. Getting closer. Holy moly. All right. One more. There we go. That's a tight fit. <clears throat> All right. So what you're going to see is in the end of the shaft, there's going to be, it, it's going to probably look like a very narrow, it's not going to like fill up the whole end. It's just like a, almost like there's a block on the end. That's the way that Mizuno puts their clubs together. That's the tip weights that they tend to use. So if you had to grab it, you could grab it with a pair of pliers, heat it up and just pull it straight out without any problems. Unlike, a regular one where you'd have to there's a lot more maneuvering so you're going to need that so what i would do is when you take you've got it apart make sure you got the hosel cleaned up very very well and on the inside of the inside of this guy clean the outside of the shaft outside of the shaft out here make sure it's nice and neat and then dig out all the glue that you can dig out because you don't want a bit of a hole. If you could get like a, oh, I don't know, something smaller than a 32nd, just enough to go up the shaft to make sure you create a couple of holes because you're going to want the air to escape when you go to put it together. And so you, you, you know, put your ferrule on there and then put the glue on there, put it in there, tap it down like you've seen me do, line it up, and you should be good to go. And it should be all right. Thanks for asking emails. Hard to respond to. We got her. Ryan Tracy. I remember you talking about Tura wedges a few weeks back. Are you still playing those? Any feedback? I am not playing those, Ryan. I had a set and Mrs. McGolf is getting ready to pick the winner of those. And uh, because they didn't have any left hand at the time, they sent me the right handed ones and I have yet to play the other ones. So no, I don't. Uh, I can tell you from the construction, it's a it is a very classic shape of the you know what I would call the pear shape or the you know the higher toe shape, the uh, the 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 grooves between the grooves are very sharp, uh, and but I would have to keep my eye on the sole grinds. I'm not so certain because it was just one kind, right? That I had. And some of the wider ones were really nice, uh, particularly if you're like a slider into that. These things could be very cool. There's a Christer. How are you, sir? So how did you finish your uh, how did you finish your season? Did you win that club championship, or how did that work out? It says, now I'm planning my back for 21. <laughs> you are always impressive with that there, Christer. I think that is just awesome. That was, uh, <laughs> I like how you tinker. That's just, you're not afraid to get into it. That's pretty cool. Josh, are you completely fine? Mr. McGough, thank you for your information. You're both too good. No problem, sir. Charlie. Yep. <clears throat> Jewel have rotator cuff surgery eight months ago. Switched to a senior shaft on my driver and just killing the ball. Well, there you go, bud. A little easier, probably a little smoother, and just throwing it right through there. That's nice. Indoor golf until spring. Well, last year, if you remember, Charlie, he was part of that. He was doing something indoor, and then he got sick. 
I don't know what happened after that. James Harvey. I like the first name, bud. Hey, Jim. Love the videos. I'm installing a double bin shaft in a broomstick putter. Any tips on getting it lined up properly so my life law and loft and lie are good? Well, if you had a loft lie gauge, you could install it and get it to where you want and just leave it clamped in until it dried. Most people don't have a loft lie gauge. So that's one. Um, you can tell, so because of double bends, when you do double bend putter shafts, they, they will tend to, they, will, they, they really, when you're looking over top of them, it is very, very obvious where you would want it to be. The real key is once you get it there and you have to bend all the way over and go get it, pick it back up, set it on your bench, and ensure nothing has moved. That's pretty tough. Okay, that's very, very tough. Now, a very general way of doing this is if you set the club, if you set the putter and it's looking straight at you like this, and you and you turn that double bend and that double bend where you can see the, where it, it just looks like it's supposed to, there, when, you, when you have this double bend, there's a, a given amount of offset and you can turn it back and forth and you will see where it maxes out and starts going one way or starts going the other way. And you want to go to where it maxes out. That's the pinnacle. Then you just set it up against the wall and let it sit there. Then the best thing to do, and this is kind of a this is an insider tip, so you guys are getting an insider tip on this one, is that about 20 minutes, if you're using 24-hour glue, wait 30 minutes. Come back. And you'll be in what's called the gel time. And then what you can do is you can set it back down, do the fine tuning of where you want it to be, set it back up and set it against the wall. Should be good to go. All righty. Yes, need some rest before the indoor season. Say, I thought we had him taken down. All righty. What do we got here? Thanks, golf dog. I'll take them. Nice. Do you think heavier shafts and bigger grips on your wedges will help your short game? Uh, that's one heck of a question, Duke. Do I think that would help? I personally, when I'm looking at sets, I like to see the wedges slightly heavier than the irons. I don't mean like super sledgehammers, but slightly heavier. So if I'm swinging 95 gram shafts, in irons, then 115 is a good number to have in a wedge. Now, there are some out there that will disagree with me and say, no, you want it lighter because it's easier to control. I say, no, it's heavier because it's never going to be a full swing club. And that helps you track it where you need to be and you can get through. That's what I say. Now, I've been, you know, and again, it, it, the best thing is it depends. It depends on the golfer. But in the so far what's worked is slightly heavier, not super heavy, slightly heavier, and, and getting it through. Now, large grips, if you're a guy, what I call point, click, and chip, it's here, back and forth, done. It's a tool. You make it go, no problems. Then, yeah, it'll lock you in. I think you'll be good. The minute that you want to get artistic with it, open it up, get fancy and flick it around, that kind of stuff, then the grip will get in the way. And that's just, that's kind of the hard and fast of it all. Now, it's funny because I play the small jumbo max in my irons, and I've just been too lazy to put regular, I, I still have regular grips on my wedges, and I'm hitting them just fine. But they are heavier shafts. All righty. Oh, Christopher Little. Thank you, sir, for the $5. I appreciate that. <laughs> oh, it says, could someone book a fitting just to fit the length loft lie of their current set? Yeah. Love my current set irons. Hit them well, but wouldn't mind driving down to fit them. Yeah. That's basically the lion's share of the fitting. And then the last bit is fitting you into the particulars. If you like that, we just shorten it up a little bit. And that's it. 
All right. Speaking of the wedges, are you any dealings with F2? No, I have not. The recess hosel that they claim is shank proof. Yeah, I saw that. No, I have not dealt with them. Um, no, they, I don't think that that stuff has made it up this far north. All righty. What do we got here? Basil Hayden Dark Rye Whiskey. If you ever find it and enjoy rye, grab a bottle. Okay. I will. So we got the, uh, you know, it's, they call it the Buffalo Tour, I guess. And that's where Pappy is made, Blanton's made, E.H. Uh, e. Taylor's made. So there's a lot of them right there in that area. And then you got the Woodford Reserve. So we're kind of hoping we hit a gold mine when we go down there. Let's see. There's Bob. Bob was hitting him a mile yesterday. Cam is in. Man, we got the old, with the group, the band is back together, so to speak. Well done. Thanks for joining us, Cam. Charlie, I'm thinking about buying a set of D9 Forge 5 through next season. Oh, there we go. That, the sole's a little wide there, Krister, so you better be careful. Now, off of that mat that you hit off of, you'll love it because you'll be pure in everything. All righty. Yep. Charlie does do pretty good with his. We've seen some good scores. Robin saying hello to Bob and Brindy Brown. All righty. Cam wants to know if I were to take a half inch or even an inch off my irons, what effect would it have on distance? And what else would mess up like weighting and would it make a really huge difference? Thanks. Okay, so here's the deal. You just cut an inch off. What happened? Well, you made the club shorter. What else happened? From a parameters point of view, you just made the swing weight light by six swing weight points at a bare minimum. All right, so if you're running around a D2, you're now looking at a D, was it six, two, four, D, a C6. So it's obviously going to be lighter overall. The total weight's going to be lighter, but uh, it I wouldn't think it was a gross lighter feel. It will just feel lighter. It just it, but is it going to throw you off kind of light? Mm, probably not. Now the the big thing with this is the big thing with this is that if you make it cut it shorter, sorry, if you cut it shorter then you're going to affect the lie angle, just like we found with Scott. And then you're going to have to need the lie angle adjusted so that it fits the way that you're swinging. Now, that's assuming that you needed, you didn't need it adjusted before. Now, will it decrease distance? Here's the argument. You just made the club shorter so that the club is swinging around. You're going to swing it slower. You're not going to hit it as far. And that's just like the idea of seeing a, a 33 and a third uh, record on a turntable where the inside is is spinning around really really fast and the outside looks like it's really really slow but they're all staying parallel so the inside it's got to work harder than the outside to get to the same spot all right that's all good and dandy until this club is so long that it's making you miss the middle of the club if cutting a half of an inch off which we do regularly if cutting a half inch off brings you into the middle of the golf club from where you're normally hitting it the lion's share of the time and i mean like 99 percent of the time you're gonna hit it further because quality of the hit is always going to overrun the any of those other adjustments that you're going to make and when you come down a half of an inch on an iron you're looking at dropping like a half a mile an hour to a mile per hour in your swing speed and that's only two and a half yards two and a quarter yards actually and as comparatively where you could have a net gain of somewhere around six to eight yards. So yeah, it will always net to the positive the other way around. All right. John Timmons, love my Mizunos. All right. Bill, did you get the right head cover? <laughs> Apparently not. Uh, oh, Bill might have. Yeah, he probably did. 
Hit that like button, folks, and subscribe if you haven't already done so and never want this community to go away. <laughs> well, thanks, Cam. Appreciate it. All righty. And there you go. Thank you, Cam. I heard McGolf is going to have a subscriber gathering when they get to 50,000. <laughs> yeah, let's do it. <laughs> oh, we're talking about that. When, when somebody mentioned a, a McGolf gathering, I was like, Robin kind of gave me the side eye, and I was like, you know, that could be cool if we said we were going to be out there and everybody wanted to show up. Uh, I think it's a great plan. November would be good. <laughs> yeah, we'll go down south where it's warm. All righty. All right. Oh, Christer's already got an idea on a bag. Let's see what he's looking at. A driver is a ping or cobra. Neither one are bad. The ping probably more over the cobra, I would think. The D9 forged irons, you're not going to go wrong there. Uh, utility wood for Callaway. They are the ones that they make most of them anyway. Wedges Cleveland. I'm starting to like, I'm starting to get nice with them. And then Wilson or a Cleveland putter. Ooh, man. Look at you go. You're just thinking outside the box, aren't you? All righty. Michael's in. Thank you for staying up late, sir. Uh, end of the season tourist rounds, 97, 96. Wow, considering those 70s we were seeing, and that's a bit of a swing. Hopefully you kept your composure. I, that'd be hard for me to do. That looks like a pretty good bag. Yeah, I, I'm not going to disagree. I'm not going to disagree. Michael says, Christer, a legit 97 is better than a mulligan 84. Ooh, there you go. Cam's asking, random question that you or someone may know, how come Pinnacle or Ping doesn't make a premium golf ball? Well, uh, Pinnacle's, ne I don't know, Pinnacle's probably never, they, they probably are part of a golf ball family of which Pinnacle will own that particular slot that, that Pinnacle finds himself in and then whoever... The golf ball manufacturer that owns them has another golf ball to take the other ones. For instance, when Callaway bought Top Flight, you know, they were never going to make a Top Flight premium ball because Callaway had to have the premium, but they had to give into that, you know, where you can get several dozens for a, low, a lower price, which would be the Top Flight. And that's how that these guys are set in there. Ping never really chased the golf ball too much, so I don't think they're putting a lot into it. There's Miss Penny Lint in it. There's Cam. Does the D94? Oh, he has the D94 and loves them too. Even more than the T100s. Ooh, that's a big statement. Well done, sir. <laughs> Matt's essentially saying it's the same bag as he's had for the last couple of years. But then when you see, you know, when he comes back and he shoot, says, well, I shot a 67, 69. And, uh, it's okay. Subscriber outing McGolf. Love the idea. There we go. I'd show up for the gathering. Who else says I? <laughs> oh, no. We're going the wrong way, guys. Explore the Philippines. Happy Monday from Maine. Hello there. Thank you for joining us. Brent Waring. Hey, Jim. Hope you and Robin are well. How many players do you see that play six different brands for 14 clubs? Seven, including the Wilson staff ball. Thanks. Not very many. Not very many. Uh, not very many. Now, I now in this last one, what I did with Scott, uh, we have him in a Mizuno driver. We have him in a Callaway utility wood. We have him in uh, a Wilson set of irons. We have him in a Mizuno wedge. And we have him in a Makefield putter. So if that's not across the board, I don't know what is. And uh, so not bad. Not bad at all. All righty. Uh, experience with two reds. Just a little bit. They, I mean, they're, a, uh, they're certainly a... Tour Edge has two companies, the Tour Edge line and the Exotic lines. 
The exotic line is obviously exactly what it sounds like. It's an exotic. It's a little higher priced, a little more high performing. The Tour Edge is for the price conscious individual. They tend to work very nice, but what happens is, is that they're not over performers, right? And that's just what happens. They're a good, good bunch of guys. It's just that's where they're at. Uh, the 7 picked up a C721 driver and a forward, but they so far they are great, but the honeymoon is close to being over. Might be in the bag. We well, you know I just had a uh, – somebody was asking me about this, and I don't, it may have been you. The C721 driver, I had to look it up. The C721 driver is a – there was two. There's an E and a C, and the C is more of the fade bias driver, if I recall correctly. And so if you're off of it just a little bit, it probably could give you fits. Now, if you're fine in the middle, it should be a really, really nice driver because the weight is a little more forward, uh, but not too bad. All righty. NQX1s, would you put Patterson shafts in them since both compensate for a flight of the ball? Yes, I would. The reason being is that they're the only people that I know of that have actually designed shafts for that very setup. You know, they got the, the high irons, the mid irons, and the low irons in order to do that. Now, now that I've said that, uh, there is another company out there and it is the axioms that do something very, very similar. Uh, you tip trim them based on, and but this doesn't assume, but they made theirs based on single length, okay? The Pedersons did. Axiom is something for standard length. Could you make them work for that? Uh, I don't know because that'd be a lot of trimming at the butt end. So let's just stay with the Pedersen and say... Uh, Yes, I would put them in there. <laughs> there you go. Swinger says, I forgot my bag. I can pick, I can pack lots of beer. <laughs> I got a big bag. There you go. <laughs> well done. There's plenty of time to get one for the 24th season. There you go. Cam says, PXG Driver 3 Wood, Wilson Irons, Callaway, and Sim Hybrids, Callaway, Tylus Wedges, Cobra Putter. I think I need to make a trip to New Hampshire from New, oh, from New Hampshire and see Jim and Robin. Well, there you go, man. All righty. Christopher Little, absolutely love the Tour Edge stuff. I play them in my Driver Hybrid Lifetime Warranty, and they're only a couple hours from me. Oh, well, there you go. There you go. Well, there we go. Look at there. We made it all the way to the bottom at 637. Nope, 638. So we made it to the bottom. Nobody's asking questions. So we are going to move on. I have got to, oh, let's do this. Here you go. Thanks for watching. Let others know about the content. Invite them to join us. Remember to like and subscribe. I should have put that there in the beginning. Alrighty, guys. Thanks for showing up. I really do appreciate it. Uh, John, thank you. Or Christopher, thank you for the $5. I appreciate that as well. You guys enjoy golf. It seems like over here in Ohio, we're going to have at least another month's worth of good golf before everybody has to make the pilgrimage down South and, uh, we'll be able to get from there. And, uh, don't forget to watch for the video tomorrow, 7 a.m. My time, and it'll be on the Mizuno wedge to see how it works out. And as always, let's see your scores go low. Thank <laughs> you.